Mm, them some nice caps. You like those? Yeah. <laughs> everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 465, being recorded on August 30th, 2017. I'm Ryan Schrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Alan Malmontano. It's almost September, which means it's almost Christmas, which means it's almost CES, which means it's almost Hooray. 2018. Don't remind me. I'm it's still hot around. outside. I keep seeing yeah. like 2018 dates being referred to in like readings and stuff. And yeah. I keep thinking this year is 2018. And I've just gone. 2017 is just blown yeah. past in my mind. I, yeah. I, I, Sorry, Ken. You still got a three more months of this to deal with. <sighs> it's true. Wait, uh, September, October, November. You got four more months. September, October, November, December. No, we canceled November yeah, this year. Fine. Oh, we yeah, I'm November. just canceling one of them. It's a, it's a leap year. <laughs> it means we get rid of yes. November. I, yeah, okay. I knew that. The boys uh, take November off. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we're here to talk about computer hardware and news and all that type of weird stuff. Uh, quick reminder, pcper.com slash podcast is where you can go find all the show notes, all the links, all the stories we talk about on a weekly basis. Uh, MP3 downloads, video downloads, RSS feeds, all that type of stuff. If this is your first time listening or you only catch it every once in a while, that's how you can go. Uh, make sure you are getting regular updates on your PC Perspective podcast fixes uh, we do record the show on wednesday nights as well 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific at pcper.com slash live now that's where we do all of our live streams if you need a gentle reminder about the live stream coming up or any other events that we may be holding if you go to pcper.com slash subscribe you get this page here ask for your name ask for your email address that's it. We send you notifications when we're going to do live streams with either uh, uh, just us doing a podcast or a game stream like we did yesterday or, you know, somebody from the industry is coming in to talk to us about some interesting new cool stuff or give away some hardware. That's the list that gets notified of that stuff first. Um, also, we all continue to have our ongoing Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash PC per Super awesome uh, to have these people directly contribute to us on a monthly basis. Uh, it, it goes directly to paying all of these guys and making sure we can continue to do stuff like the show, like the game streams, like the mailbags, all that type of stuff. Uh, and as we normally do, if you become a new or uh, upgraded patron during the stream, we will call out your name no matter how ridiculous it is on the stream. And I say that knowing I've already seen the first email come in since the stream has gone up. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this one. It's like ripping the Band-Aid off. It can only it can only be a positive experience from here. We have a new pledge from Biggest Dickus, uh, B-I-G-G. Monty Python fan. How much money did I give? Uh Three dollars. <laughs> that sounds about right. It's okay. It's all right. So three dollars. It's it's awesome. What a biggest dickus. Uh, yes. So B I G G U S. I want to know uh, how much Titanic is buttocks. buttocks. Donate too. You guys. Please. Yeah. Okay. Josh, you go first. I think that Jeremy and I both said the same thing. We wonder how much Continentia buttocks would would give. You, you totally did not say the same thing. No. <laughs> uh, oh. Continentia buttocks. We'll have to see. We'll see if they if they become a patron as well tonight. I don't know. It could be that could be that kind of evening. Um, speaking of those other things that we are doing, partially funded by the Patreon campaign, you know, partially funded by I don't know normal advertising that we do. We do have a uh, we had another mailbag episode six. That's six straight weeks running of of this lovely face staring at you answering questions for about 20 minutes. Um, that's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash PC per. I guess we need to start posting these on the homepage too. I, I haven't done it yet. Just create like a, a an easy news post for that type of stuff um, that we can embed the video. No other, no other uh, uh, surroundings really necessary. And then of course, um, well not of course, but I wasn't here this week, but apparently the guys played Lords of the Realm 2. Jim was responsible for that. Alan was the sit-in. Ken, you were running stuff behind over here, or what were you? I was just you? sick in the corner. He was just sick in you the corner. You were just sick in the corner. Yeah. Well, thank you for he not. Was, he was trying to keep off the set. But... Uh, so Lords of the Realm 2, I don't know anything about this, so I'm actually, I'll, I'll go spend an hour playing. What, 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 is, what is this most similar to for people who have never played I'm Lords not going to say what, I came, what came to mind, because Jim will freaking castrate me from across the office. <laughs> uh, he did not like that I compared it to AoE. Diablo? Is it look like? No, is it more of a strat? No. RTS? What is it? 
It's turn based, turn-based strategy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you if you if you're curious about the Lords of the Realm two came out in ninety six, twenty one years ago, mind mm-hmm. you, uh, you can check that out. And uh, that will be something we continue to do as well. PC per plays, everybody. When, when did Civ 2 come out? Is it 97? Was it 96 as well? Something like that. I don't know the answer to that. It's, it's concurrent Civ 2, with best them. game ever. Best game ever? It was. 96. Was or is? Civ 2. All right, yep. all right. And then that's, that's not Civ 5 that I'm holding up there. <laughs> Sim V. No, because that, no, <laughs> that one's not good. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get into our reviews we have. I'll be honest with you. We're going to run through these relatively quickly. We had um, uh, no major hardware releases and launches uh, that occurred. No new GPUs, no new CPUs. It's kind of, I feel a little weird, a little off um, with, without that type of stuff. But let's dive into it. Did you not talk about the VLAN or did I miss something? Oh, I, you, you, I must have not. Jeremy. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see that on the. It's true. Uh, you link. totally skipped over it. It's okay. Now, now the highlights back up. Lenny there, so is tell crying, me about it. but it's okay. Well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't remember this. I literally printed all the shipping labels for the prizes this <laughs> afternoon. So, oh, you're so you're uh, trying to forget it at this point. <laughs> but, Just a couple hundred yeah, bucks. Yeah, it was a good one. It's fine. I I uh, ended up making my computer a little cranky, and it took a couple of hours to pet it long enough for it to decide that it didn't actually have a problem and wanted to play again. So I missed a chunk of it. I saw Al on it. Uh, There were over 70 people on at the peak. For a good chunk of it, uh, there were about 50 people active on TeamSpeak, uh, doing everything from uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds straight through to, uh, of course, Dino D-Day, Unreal Tournament, (laughs) 2K4, uh, Golf With Your Friends, because, well, what else can you play when you've got no uh, stand-eye coordination left at the end of the day? (laughs) They were doing some dinosaur game when, when I was on there. They were like yeah. dinosaur killing or something. I don't know. Sounds perfectly acceptable it's, to me. It's it's sort of a game. It's fun to play. It's only sort of a game. But <laughs> we gave away quite a bit. Uh, a case, a cooler. A um, couple of cases at we're least. We're not quite sure what Josh is shipping because apparently bad things have been happening in his closet. Josh just misrepresented what the prize was supposed to be. So I've I've given Josh a shipping label and said ship the things that work, and we'll figure it out later from there. Does that work, Josh? Josh, you're muted. He's still muted. Josh. I like that look when someone realizes I, they're muted. Like ah, that was good. <laughs> No, I'd, I'd put out the two prizes as two separate prizes, but somebody combined them together. An AM3 Plus board and an FM2 Plus processor. Something Sebastian could have actually worked with. <laughs> well, the good news is either the processor or the motherboard for either one of those platforms aren't very expensive at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you could have two systems. I, I kind of just decided that we'll send both of those parts to that winning individual and they can choose to build buy a processor for one and a motherboard for another and they get the parts of two systems out of it's it. It's like I when guess. you win the car but you have to pay the taxes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well what would you rather me do? Because I've I've got an eighty three seventy E that I can send as well. Instead of instead the, the FM two processor. Yeah, that's fine. Just do that. That makes sense. Okay. I'll do that. That'd be better off for him. All right. Okay. And also thanks to AMD for ordered. giving away two Ryzen's. <laughs> oh they did directly. Perfect. Yeah. Fantastic. Maybe this person already ordered a motherboard and a processor. No, there was. We had emails going back and forth about, oh. "Hey, uh, I'm really appreciative of the prize. You dumb idiots. These two things don't <laughs> go together." And he didn't well. say that, but that's. I, I understood it to be that, right? And I understand why you would think that. It's like, but, but, yeah. I I gave you an X99 motherboard and a Ryzen 7 1800X. Wait, what? Why would you? No, please don't do that. Why are you complaining? Why? <laughs> Uh, all right, before we get into our actual first reviews here, we do have three new patrons wow. to add. Well, no, uh, we have two new ones and an, and an edit. A cheap viewer just pledged $1, is what it says. <laughs> well, a, a cheap viewer just pledged $1. Honest and generous. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, a cheap viewer. Uh, Gabriel Cerna pledged $5. Thank you very much. Uh, that's awesome. And it's not the size, it's how you use it. No, really. And just bump their pledge up a dollar from 175 to 176. So uh, thank you very much. It's not the size. It's how you use it. No, really. Period. 
I want to know, there's there's a limit to the n amount of characters you can fit in that field. Did you say bumped up a dollar? Yeah. From what to what? 175 to 176. Dollars? Yes. Oh. <laughs> no, one dollar and 75 cents. No. Really? Yes. No. no. Yes. Wow. I thought it was going to be funny when they bumped no. it up a cent. No, no. I they're, wouldn't, they're actually like generous up a cent, I don't call it, right? They're generous. So it's yeah. got to be at least a okay. dollar. So that's it. So thank you very much. All right, all right. Now let's get into these uh, these reviews. Lee posted uh, one of the Seasonic Prime 1000 watt platinum power supply. It is uh, again part of this re revision, revising this whole kind of revamp of the Seasonic product line, the Prime series. This is their kilowatt platinum rated part. Um, they they do have a titanium series as well, but you can see we've we've actually covered a whole bunch of these different devices, so I don't feel like we need to spend a whole lot of time on it. $199, so it is expensive for a power supply, fully modular, uh, but for a really nice Seasonic power supply that is platinum rated at 1,000 watts, 200 bucks isn't really outside uh, the realm of, of what we would expect. Um, I am kind of curious if anybody wants to check and see on availability of this type of device uh, with all of the coin mining stuff that has been been hitting us recently. Give me a look at them caps. Oh, you want to look at them? Oh, dim, yeah. Dim caps. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Yep. No. Outside still. Scrolling. Mm. All right. Mm. There you go. Mm, them some nice caps. You like those? Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. It's only a little bit weird, but hey, you know, that's okay. We're all here for each other in weird fetishes and stuff. Just don't look at Ken's browser history. I believe that was one of our lessons from earlier today. Well, Jim's browser history. As well. Well, hey, don't look at anybody's browser history. Uh, so, so Lee likes this one. Gold Award. Um, no, the only minor weakness was the power or the PCIe connectors are the two on each cable, kind of like daisy chained together. It depends on what your preferences are, whether or not that's a that's a, a negative. Obviously, if you look at the back, if there's not a whole lot of room, if you want the same number of connectors, you don't have the space for one connection per PCIe cable. Um, but you can go all the way up to 1200 watt platinum if you want, and down to 650. And if you get the 650 of the Seasonic Prime Platinum, uh, it's 129 bucks. So, pretty good product there for everybody. Uh, we also Maury posted a review. We've got a couple of cooling reviews, a couple of power supply reviews. So, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna jog through these. Maury posted a Coolance uh, CPU block review, the uh, 390Ci, which is this guy right here. Um, obviously, this is if you're gonna spend the time to become more invested in your PC, and uh, uh, you you want to dive into the world of of, of custom cooling solutions. This is what you're looking at. It's an MSRP of 90 bucks, so it's not cheap, but I guess, is that kind of in the realm of regularity for water blocks, $90? dollars might actually be on the low side. Really? Okay. Yeah. For, yeah. A, for a quality like copper it's water a, block. Yeah. It's a uh, nickel-plated copper block, yeah. right? Machine flat, polished mirror. Um, I've paid more than that in the past for previous Cool Ants water blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's got. It looks like it's got support for LGA twenty eleven, LGA eleven fifty X, eleven five X. No mention of Threadripper, but this, this this product was out for for quite a while before yeah, that. Yeah. Does support socket AM four, so if you're using a Ryzen part, um, you'll be able to do that. I'll be curious. I'm actually, we should ask Maury if he's heard any updates about these types of devices. And I know Hardware CP posted a review. Or no, not a review. They posted pictures that they had just gotten in a, a dedicated Threadripper block from somebody. Uh, I don't remember what company it was. Um, so it's it's a it's it's the Coolance device, microfin nickel plated copper cold plate. I think it was uh, nickel plated copper cold plate. I think it was EK. I think they have a dedicated Threadripper water block. I think trying to remember. Yeah, yeah uh, nickel plated copper it. top, thick steel mounting uh, bracket, standard G uh, quarter inch barb. Or quarter inch threading will accept fitting diameter up to 19 millimeters outside diameter. Um, so, again, this is something really particular. If you are interested in the custom water cooling and you're going to go down that route, Maury is going to go, he, like in terms of imaging and descriptions and installation, Maury is going to give you a tremendous amount of detail to this. He probably, was, he probably it, liked that the top was metal because he's cracked the plastic ones in the past. Oh, has he? Yeah. I will say this picture of it being mounted on a motherboard doesn't have quite the same effect on me as as the giant heat sinks that he tends to post. Yeah. 
as well. But uh, you know, everybody's got to have their. This is how we wean desires. him off of that. Is no, I mean, he builds this like for his own machines. This is what he's building. Like yeah. he, you know, gets these for 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 his own use. Um, the giant air coolers are convenience of moving things around and test builds and system reviews and all that, which I totally understand. Um, so it's eighty nine bucks for performance PC. You actually get it on Amazon for seventy eight bucks. Um, so it seems like a relatively inexpensive part. Editor's choice for Mori. Uh, great performance under stock and overclock conditions. Good build quality. Uh, nickel plating and corrosion resistance on all surfaces. Uh, dense microchannel design. Weaknesses was was price. So apparently in his mind, it is kind of air on the high side, I guess, for today. Uh, but you need to disassemble the block to switch out the mounting bracket. That does seem kind of like uh, a pain, I guess. Uh, but either way, check out that review. Editor's choice. Coolance CPU 390Ci CPU water block. Ta-da. Back to power supplies. Real quick, Lee posted <laughs> the Be Quiet SFX 600-watt power supply. Totally different uh, mindset than the 1,000-watt C-Sonic we just looked at. This is an SFX, small form factor, um, although this is the SFXL, which means longer. Mm -hmm. So it's smaller, but it's also a little bit longer mm -hmm. than the other one. So we you know, get into these competing standards. 600-watt unit from Be Quiet, uh, $119.00. Still a little bit on the pricey side for the wattage you're getting, but you're paying for the compactness of design. I'm going to skip your uh, uh, shots there, Ken, and move straight to the conclusionary page here. Um, All that work for nothing. Sorry. Skipping the pictures of the caps and going straight to the conclusion page on this one. Yeah. Disappointing. The, the 600 watts don't, don't do it for me. It's yeah. got a half kilowatt they, or more. They have smaller caps than you yeah, need. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Some people like bigger caps. Some people prefer smaller caps. Everybody's got preferences. Uh, silver award on this one. 500 and 600 watt models are available. This SFX L design. Um, it is adaptable to a full-size ATX should you want to do that, although it seems... Like you could find other options in this price range that are maybe a little bit either higher wattage or lower price at the same wattage, whatever you happen to do. Mm -hmm. uh, all modular flat ribbons, uh, only minor weakness being the three-year warranty as most of the guys now are going up to five or beyond. So check out that review. Anybody want to talk about a cooler again? Who read Sebastian's FSP, Windale 4 and 6? Just when you thought everybody you could possibly think of was in the cooler business. FSP... Known for power supplies, especially known for power supplies in the workstation and server it's spaces. Like, uh, I like, uh, comes over here. I like to look at these like four heat pipes or six heat pipes. It just makes sense with the product names. Uh, sometimes it's nice when things just right? make sense, right? Windale 4, Windale 6. Yeah. Now, I do like the black styling I of do. the 6 yeah. more than I do that. And and, and it's, again, having having no pre predisposition to this, the one on the left kind of looks like that, that uh, Cooler Master... What you must screw it. I'm trying to think the of the Hyper 212 Evo. Yeah, the Hyper 212 Evo. I mean, that's right? just what a heat sink looks yeah. like. Yeah, and that's actually a that's actually a flat black coating, which chances are would actually increase its uh, heat dissipation because it's black really? body. It would it radiates heat off of the surface better as opposed yeah. to a shiny metal. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I see. I would have guessed the otherwise that the coating would somehow restrict. I mean, if it's if it's an insulating like insulate it, yeah. coating, then yeah, that would be true. But I. Don't think but they would do that. If it's a powder coat, it's, it's the same, not going to be that thick. Well, it's the same and coating. it's going to increase the surface area. Yeah, but and but the coating is on all of the fins of as well. So you, uh, they would not have used it that kind of But will absorb the RSGs and Bs and slightly warm up? Yes. It's a trick they use on uh, intercoolers for, for cars. <laughs> if, if they're black coated. I, they, I, think that, I think that's a myth, Alan. Well, it's kind of a myth, but you know. You know, if you, uh, it gives if you change more... the muffler, it gives you four extra horsepower. No, no, no. Well, true. I, I like my intercooler. Just raw. think what vinyl. Damn yeah. it. Uh, the pricing on these is really what makes them interesting, right? So the Windale 4 is 29 bucks. The Windale 6 is 44 bucks. So they're clearly going after that same market, right? They're going yeah. after the, the low cost, uh, but still highly effective cooling system. Sebastian goes to the review here. Lots of amazing photos, of course, because it's Sebastian. 45 bucks for that Windale 6. Yeah. And, it's, yep. and you can tell, like, that's looking at the bad. shot, it's a pretty beefy looking uh, device. Uh, they are sleeve bearing fans, so that's a little bit of a you no, know detriment. Is, but it's they're quieter. No, than they're quieter bearing. than the two twelve or the yeah the two twelve. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Noticeably so. 
let's jump to that section. There, here's the, here's the uh, Mori esque shot of. Uh, oh, that's Monstro. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty that's big. A big freaking cooler. That yeah. mounting system actually seems close to the knock to a secure firm, secu firm. Now that we've installed a couple of those in the past week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got the screw on either side. You have to have the fan off. So here's how it looks: the Core it. i7-7700K at stock. Uh, the Windale 6 is a little bit better, and the Windale 4 is eh, almost matching to a little bit worse than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Okay. Right? I, so I, my, my bigger concern is the noise, because the 212 Evo is kind of a loud fan. Yeah. Well, then, well at full, it's quieter than at, at idle. Yeah. Really? There you go. I mean, if you look at the noise yeah. levels, based on Sebastian's story, the, the, the Windale 4 and 6 are both significantly quieter than the, the Hyper 212 Evo. I like, might, at full load versus uh, I might be, versus, uh, I might be ordering a fan idle. tonight. Hey, I've got Amazon links in this review that you should yeah, click. Yeah, yeah. Plus LEDs. I was looking at a Noctua cooler. LEDs. You know, moving to that, to that, but I like this black one. Better. The world's most devilish LED, the blue. I just don't like like Noctua needs an easy solution for people that don't like brown fans. That's their thing. <laughs> they, they, I know it's their thing, but they, there's yeah. they have to lose some sales over that. Nah. Like if you're doing like a white no, build or a black, I think build, you're probably right. Like it's just this beige How about brown. Spray paint, man? I mean, just put you know, another fan on it. I guess. Like, but why? I'm going to pay for the cooler. It out. does kind of defeat the purpose. The cooler has like a $12 <laughs> fan on it. Yeah. I'm going to go put it's a different a good, fan on it. It's like, a really good fan. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Uh, so like I said, 29 bucks for the Windale 4, 45 for the Windale 6 uh, from FSP. Uh, gold award from Sebastian Aww. here for both the 4 and the 6. The 6 is currently unavailable from Amazon. Oh. Damn it. <sighs> Uh, but the four is twenty five dollars instead ooh, it's of even cheaper. Yeah, even cheaper. Um, so yeah, Sebastian came away pretty impressed. So I, I, even though at the beginning I, I kind of bad mouth the idea of another cooler guy coming into the mix, but hey, make a good product. You price it really reasonably. You're going to get attention. People are going to buy it. They'd for have they'd have a sale for me right now if the, the thing wasn't stock. I'll let you buy it from somewhere else if you need to. You don't need to, but if you do need to, then you can do that. I'll, I'll give it a few days. Uh, before we get into our news stories here, let's quickly mention uh, we have two new patrons. Josh is my father. <laughs> just pledged five dollars. Josh, you got a, you got another kid now. I'm looking at this uh, this picture. I don't see the resemblance. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. Josh, did you have any red haired bearded sons <laughs> that I don't know about? Did you ever date a red haired bearded bearded woman? <laughs> That's a better question. You know, I had kind of reddish hair in my youth when I actually had hair. So Yeah, well, I'm not really sure that's true. Uh oh, here we go. We got another one for uh from Nicholas mm, Berthame. Berthame? Berthume? B E R T H A U M E. Nick Berthum, Berthum. from uh, Colorado. All right. I know Nick. Oh, you know him. Yeah. Well, he pledged thirty dollars. No way. Us just now. Yes Nick. way. Yeah. Yes way. Thank you, Nick. Now I think we're friends. That Josh introduced us. I can just call you Nick. I don't have to call you Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. Even though yeah, that we, is the we, name uh, we, put up we there. had beers down in Fort Collins uh, last oh, cool. year. Cool. Cool. Yeah. One day I'll get out west to see you, Josh. One day. Not in the winter. We'll see. Uh, all right. So let's jump into things and news stories or whatever. Uh, Ken found this today for us. Scott wrote it up. Uh, all We had the talk last week about Vega 64 and Vega 56 and all the stocking issues and some of the technical issues and the pricing concerns. And one of the things we brought up at the time was that they weren't allowing BIOS flashing. Yeah. Right. And as it turns out, they weren't allowing BIOS modifications mm -hmm. because then the driver became unsigned. Mm -hmm. It didn't, didn't match. Uh, but apparently... Um, the BIOS became unsigned. Correct. Not the driver. Correct. Right. Chipel, which is a fairly uh, large, well-known Chinese computer tech forum, yeah, um, and those guy and website, um, apparently flashed an RX Vega 56 with a V BIOS from a Vega 64. Is that right, Ken? Yeah. And it's, and, guess what? and it's because a, they're it's both a signed, signed, it's a signed BIOS. <laughs> it just I, took it. That's so <laughs> God. It seems. Ugh. It seems Bad. improbable. So here's the thing, right? So I had this discussion with somebody about how the signing would work. And you, you would think that the product name or something. So would the be assumption actually that, that the person I was talking with made was that they wouldn't actually 
try to match the signed BIOSes with a particular board because That's then true. they would have to do a lot more BIOS for every uh, vendor. Yes, BIOS for every vendor and every vendor subcard yeah, really. in theory as well. That's true. So instead, he kind of predicted this would be the case. Now, I hadn't actually gone through the process of trying to do the flashing. Yeah. I just and didn't have the tool set to do it. But. The ATI flash tool that Sports Vega is only like a week old. So. Okay. Okay. So lo and behold, you can do it. And now what happens, Ken? Uh, you get a performance increase that in their limited testing with 3D Mark got them to about 2% of the performance of Vega 64. So now... Probably because it can run at higher clocks for the same amount of power. Yeah. As far as anyone can tell, they haven't been able to unlock shaders. Yeah. It might be the thing where some cards can, we just don't have a big enough sample size to determine it yet. But mm. as far as we know right now, they're not unlocking additional shaders. They're just mainly increasing the power target so that you can clock it higher yeah. because the power target was definitely the hard limit for overclocking on Vega 56. Yep. So you're yeah. getting at the Vega 64's power target. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would... Being is that we've gone through a couple of GPU launches where people have not been able to unlock cores, it would be hard for me to believe that AMD would have changed the process in such a way that a BIOS flash would unlock cores well, yeah. I at mean, this point. I think they're blowing fuses I'm at the pretty factory. sure Polaris had some core unlocking in the lower end parts, like the 560 did. and stuff. I think there was... Yeah, I know I, you could I, flash like 480 BIOSes to some force them. So some 470s. Yeah, like GCN you could, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, it was GCN all the way through this. Just I think what Polaris vision, had but... some of that and some no, of the stack, okay, at point. least. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's... Also would, be, would note, like, depending on what tools they were using to see if they had re-enabled these shaders, they might, like, the tools might not be detecting it correctly, right? If they're still reading a device ID, they would be uh, reporting whatever. I, I forget the name of the tool, but it was, like, a... Open CL tool they were using, so they were seeing what, what I the guess throughput Open was CL was reporting thing. back. Yeah. Okay, so but you would be pretty I, sure that the driver would get that right. I mean, one thing they can't think. see is clocks, though. They're probably seeing that the 56 ends up with running at higher clocks. Yeah, than, I would love than to the see that. Yeah. Would, you know, it, it's surprising to me that it took this long for this to occur. If it was as simple as <laughs> taking flash. a BIOS off of a 64 <laughs> and putting it on a 56. Well, I mean, until this week, very little people had 56s. That's, That's true. true. Only reviewers really had the 56s. And not even all reviewers had a 56 and a 64, so... Right. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Now now this brings up the, the idea of, like, can you flash the water-cooled 64 BIOS onto the air-cooled 64 BIOS? You I, should be able to. And then what's the result? Do you just... Should have a higher power. Or target. actually, the other way around, I guess, is what you'd want to do, right? You would want to take the air cooled one on the water cooled card? Because the air cooled one allows you to move the temperature target up to 85C. Sure. Oh, on the, the power water -cooled, target isn't as high. Yeah, the power target's a hard limit. Yeah, but you can move that slider up to 50%. Wasn't but there some other trick way. with being able to move the slider to like 170 something percent or some crap? There's with some like a registry with oh like the power play tables and windows. I'm not entirely sure how all that mm -hmm. stuff works yeah. yet. But. Yeah, There's I mean, a, if you were if you put a if you put your own one of those EK water blocks on Vega, yeah, you might want to run the water cooled BIOS on it so you get the additional TDP out of it. And, and you don't there, care about and, the temperature target because you're running on water. So. And there are blocks out now. Yeah, because well, EK, EK makes them. I know if they've at least sampled Announced some of them. them. I don't yeah. know if they're out out hopefully but, they didn't yeah. make a whole lot of water blocks based on the availability of product at this point. Well, there's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll mm -hmm. see. And who wants to spend that much? Like now, you're putting your card in a 1080 Ti price class by putting water. Oh on yeah, it. but I mean, you know, what you're I mean? doing that all. Water if is you're always buying a water that, block though. for a GPU, you're always doing that, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, and Ken, mostly. Hey, hey, guess what? Vega's a GPU that would really like water. Twitch, Twitch That's says true. we're playing Lords of the Realm too. Will you take a look at that when you get a chance? We aren't. I thought that was what we were getting to next. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We're Fair. gonna play it some more. Fair. Jim's over there still playing that game. He started. Uh, you know, he started. Uh, started the other day. He said he was gonna finish it. Oh, he had man. some conviction. So that's 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 what that's what we're tracking on Vega fifty six. I guess it's worth noting Vega sixty Vega fifty six supposedly came out on August twenty eighth, which was just a few days ago, a couple two days ago, um, on Monday, and it very quickly sold out again. Um, 
No idea what the issue is. We still haven't seen Vega 64 really come back into stock, right? We haven't seen any kind of like sudden changes in that, even though AMD promised us that there were, quote, I mean, they've been trickling out like a little bit every day, but they're still $100 more expensive than they should be based on MSRP or SEP. Yeah. Trickle out economics. That's the way it works. Yeah. I need to, now that I'm not traveling for a couple of weeks, spend a little bit more time. Digging into that, I don't. Nobody's going to want to talk about any of it anymore. RX Everybody's Vega so sixty four. It's like seven hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. That is. No, that's prime. May take an extra one to two days to ship. That just means that 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 usually okay. indicates that the product is just showing up at warehouses, mm. and they want to yeah put that on there for shipping. But usually they still ship pretty quick. So, well, there's your Vega update for the week. Let's talk about. Oh wait, no, there was another one. The sound and fear of the RX Vega fifty six. This was a review. Uh, oh, this is Hard SCP posting their review of the RX Vega 56 uh, as they compare it to the R9 Fury. Because ROPS and texture units are the same in both cards, but the Fury uses HBM1 at a wider interface. Vega 50, I'm sorry, Fury uses HBM1 at a wider interface. Vega 56 uses HBM2 at a narrow interface uh, at a higher uh, clock speed. Um, and they're both Vega? No, no, Fury. Oh. The R9 Fury okay. is what they're comparing it to. Okay, so the R9 okay, Fury okay. and mm. Vega 56 have the same number of compute units. Oh, I didn't think yeah. of that. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's a, it's a good comparison. Jeremy, what, what, did they, what did they come across with? Uh, well, I mean, the long story short was uh, there was a little bit of back and forth, but the vast majority of the tests, your new Vega 56 will be about 25% faster uh, at just about anything you throw at it. Showing that uh, you know the HPM two isn't suffering from having a slightly lower memory bandwidth, right? And if you're thinking of upgrading, well, first off, don't do it yet. Wait a month until there's actually cards. Second off, yeah, this is actually a bump up. And if you're a generation behind, the fact that the fifty six is a hundred bucks cheaper uh, makes it even more attractive. Yeah, you can find it for sale at the price it should be. But generation to generation, it's it shows a nice jump for AMD. It's. I mean, most of that as, most of that increase is clock speed, right? Um, yeah. So, but hey, I mean, they did that on the same process nodes. They deserve credit for for him to get that get that bump out there. Um, next up on the list, uh, <laughs> if you wanted something to do. Speaking of graphics card shortages, if you wanted, yeah. If you wanted something to do with all of your uh, Radeon Vega fifty six cards, maybe you wanted to mine them, for example. Asus has built a B250 expert mining motherboard with 1919 PCI Express slots, and this is what mm -hmm. Asus doesn't fuck around. I mean, look at that. No. That's that is that is essentially. It's like 18 by one slots and a single <laughs> by 16. Look, it's got three ATX connectors for yeah. power supply, and it will. This looks like a photo. I can't shop. imagine why. So, so actually, so it will turn so. That's part of a challenge if you have a mining rig and you want more power supplies. Like, you need more power supplies, then you have motherboards, mm -hmm. right? Because you just have more wattage to supply. Yep. Uh, so this board will turn on and off all three power supplies. Mm, that's a good idea. Right? So sure. I have them jumpered. Um, so yeah, you two PS2 ports. So you'd have basically six GPUs per one power supply, which is about what the ratio works out to for like 1070s or something. Three auxiliary Molex power connectors to feed uh, the PCIe To make sure that the, you have, yeah, yeah, to make sure you have plus 12 on the... Uh, I wish I could find it. It won't be a concern. <laughs> I saw somewhere there was a chart about like what GPU vendor would support how many GPUs? Yes, yeah. and yeah, there like, was, there's a chart for this plug board. You can plug in 19 1080s and have this work. There's yeah, there's a chart for this board that shows you fit. like they section off the sections of slots and show you how many of what you can have in the different slots. So you, I don't think you can do like all Nvidia or all AMD. This all reminds well, I believe me, this AMD with the mining specific driver they released or when they're going to release will yeah. allow all 19 to work. Got it. Which is crazy. Like, AMD seems to support PCIe bifurcation better, I think, at this point. Yeah. The first thing I thought of when I saw this motherboard was a uh, dog that had just had puppies. <laughs> and this, and I was like, this is where all the video, video, the baby video cards come to feed. Yeah. yeah off of the motherboard. The, I, the thing that... <laughs> is a little demented. The thing that gets me for this, though, is like, so... Like someone trying to put one of these together, you're going to spend more on 
the different kinds of ribbons you would need to st- get cards to far enough away. That out. It, right. Yeah. Just daisy chain them. Like Linus did it. Oh it yeah. Fine. Sure. But like you know, you can't just use like the short ribbons that you see floating around. You'd need the ones that go to like a USB cable. And then I go like back. this stuff. Uh, they have other changes, like uh, they say they have uh, f- uh, tuned to improve mining efficiency. BIOS tweak to improve mining efficiency. I don't know what that means exactly. A splash screen at startup that shows the state of each PCIe slot at a glance at each yeah, boot. That yeah, makes the splash sense. Screen is no, it should cool. also show the current <laughs> price of Bitcoin. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> And, and, it just just of this and it shouldn't even bother finish booting until Bitcoin goes to the right number. <laughs> mm-hmm. Voltage stabilization caps uh, for each GPU slot. What? See, why does it still have four SATA connectors on it? Well, just like only put one on there and save some money. I mean, I uh, guess. Maybe they only sell them in blocks. This should have like, <laughs> like I mean, uh, that is true. It's a block as a two at least. PCIe <laughs> yeah. connector. It should have just like a Celeron soldered onto this you board. Because that's all you ever want to run on it. Virtualized, uh, virtualized environments. No, don't do that. Yeah. If you're maybe generating rainbow tables, it would be quite nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess these things, motherboards, just as it goes, is pretty reliable. I just don't like having that many eggs in one basket. Do like it, have 18, like if that motherboard it's fails. It's still just impressive that they did it. If it's that got board, two dim slots, so it's one of those. If the board like, fails or goes chop down. Some, chop some off of this. Like, you know, if the board fails or goes down, you're down 18 GPUs until you replace the motherboard. Well, if you have buy any, a backup motherboard. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, if you're a serious miner, you have backup hardware for all these uh, devices. That's true. Anyway, let's move on to this one. Happy Monday, everybody. Jeremy says, that shiny new graphics card you've been eyeing uh, just got more expensive. And this is, of course, what, what we've been left with. Monday sucks with the... What mm. happened on... What was wrong, Jeremy? What happened on Monday? Well, remember this depressing news I've been going on about for the last couple of months about NAND shortages? Well, it's spreading to VRAN. And so the bastards at uh, XK Hynix and Samsung have realized, well, shit. We make more money making memory for cell phones and servers than we do for graphics cards. So we're going to drop our production by about 30, 35%. Mm. And so the the interesting thing is this is specifically NVRAM. So AMD doesn't care. Uh, This is an HBM that they've not affected by this specifically. So NVIDIA cards, you can expect to see a jump about 3 to 10% in price next month and for the foreseeable future because if there's one thing companies do after they hike a price is forget to put it back down afterwards so we'll see on the other hand you know hbm is a little more expensive a little slower to make also being used for epic servers uh baidu is apparently buying them up right left right and center good for amd but we might see amd cards not drop so quickly as we're hoping and one has to wonder, I, I doubt that this theory is correct, but one has to wonder if uh, Lisa Sue was smart enough to look and say, you know, I can see this coming. I'm not going to start screaming about prices quite yet, because I know NVIDIA is going to see a jack up soon. Hmm. We'll see. I, I, I Probably not, and right now you can't price a GPU to save your life because it's all miners driven. But yeah, it's it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Sorry, guys. Boo. Boo. Uh, how about this one, Jeremy? UK Samsung owners mm-hmm. are a little peeved. What happened here on the TV? <laughs> what, what, what is this? So they, they sent out a, a firmware update over <laughs> the waves, and uh, it didn't just, you know, oh, look, the TV is now kind of broken, and we need to reset it. It's, oh, look, the TV plays one channel at one volume, uh, I can turn it on <laughs> or off, but that's it. And I'm going to have to send it into the factory to get it reset. Yeah, that's the real downside. Wah, like, this wah. is not something a local repair shop can handle for you. It's not something you can do yourself. It's going back home to get wiped. This is why everyone they only should have JTAG cables at home. You can fix it yourself. Just need the right <laughs> utility. How about you just disconnect your TV from the internet? Yeah, but you have to disassemble the set just to get to the well, JTAG yeah. connector. I mean... Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> kind of a downside there, even if you had the gear. Poor planning. So no issue and on the U.S. Test. side, though? No, they they rolled it out first in Europe and went, oh, that's not good. <laughs> Early adopters. <penalty. laughs> so they stopped. Early adopters. That's not to penalty. say this won't happen again. 
But uh, on a brighter note, Asus did announce the ZenBook Flip S, not flips, Flip S UX 370. This is a revision uh, through the Microsoft Store for 1399. It's a Cabby Lake part, so it is a dual core processor, dual core hyper threaded, which will be important as we get to the the following stories. Um, 16 gigs of memory, 512 gig PCI SSD, 1080p, 13.3 inch screen, 2.43 pounds. This is actually a really nice piece of hardware for tw- uh, for 13.99, especially with 512 gig SSD and a 16 and 16 gigs of memory. Um, you get a pair of USB 3.1 Type C plugs, an audio port, uh, 802.11 AC, Bluetooth 4.1. Uh, we had one of these in the office for a little while, didn't we? Is this the this, this is the 370? Did we? I think we actually might have done. Did we do a review of this item? Did Sebastian do one of these? Not the 370. It was the one before it? Oh, okay, okay. All right. Then ZenBook Flip S. Now the reason this mm. is an interesting discussion, I guess, is so um, Best Buy. It looks like Best Buy is going to carry. A gray color variant called the Asus Q325 with Windows 10 Home with the 512 gig SATA SSD for eleven ninety nine. Yeah. That's well, interesting. That's quite a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean two hundred bucks to move from a well PCIe the, to a SATA SSD. The difference in the name, the operating system, and that S it's just like it's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's why Microsoft Store has got the one specific one. Yeah. And it's a totally different name for the other one, which is frustrating, but at least it's not like a UX 370. Yeah, there's multiple SKUs to- things really get you sometimes. They could, they're confusing. It makes it also impossible to price match across companies mm-hmm. that way too. Not an accident. So uh, last week we talked, did we talk about that last week? The yeah. quad core Intel 8th yeah. gen processors. Yeah, what about them? We talked about them. Did yeah. Intel announced them? Okay, so now at IFA. A couple of systems have been announced, starting with the Acer uh, announced the Switch 7 Black Edition. Ken, what is what is this? It looks it looks a, it's got like the surface look to it, right? So it's a tablet kind of. Yeah, so it's a two in one with a kickstand and mechan- a, a uh, magnetic, not mechanical, magnetic keyboard. Mechanical would be pretty awesome. <laughs> so sort of the same thing we've seen from a lot of these Surface Pro clones, but mm-hmm. this actually has a lot of cool tricks up up its sleeve. First, the hinge is actually really cool. It has this sort of auto eject feature where if the leading, the bottom edge of the tablet touches down on a table, the kickstand automatically flips out. Right. So instead of like when you're setting up a Surface Pro and you, you put it down, you fold out the keyboard, you got to put out the kickstand. You got to use just, two hands for that yeah, process. You have to use at least two hands. You have to, to hold the device you just, while you, the other hand actually flips the physical kickstand out. Yeah, out you can just the set back. the tablet down, kickstand pops out. If you need to adjust it, you adjust it, but mm-hmm. you can kind of do it more one-handed, which hmm. is cool. But the biggest thing here is it's using those new 8th generation Intel core parts, the 15-watt quad-core parts, and has a discrete NVIDIA GeForce MX150 GPU which is their lowest end Pascal GPU they announced recently, targets Ultrabooks, this sort of thing. It's a 25 watt part, I think. Not exactly going to give you awesome 3D performance, but if you want to play something like Rocket League, it'll be certainly it'll be enough, enough. Of that, yeah. But it is completely a completely passively cooled machine. Yeah, no fans. No fans. Quad core CPU, discrete GPU. No fans. No fans. Yeah. I, Damn. What, they say they're using a quote. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, liquid loop, but yeah. So apparently it's a heat they had a liquid loop in their last generation of products, and this is the dual liquid loop where they have two. Yeah, but just what you see, they have two loops connecting the GPU and the CPU heat to the system. Have liquid in them. But it it's seems, just so this is it's a fanless it's a, design. Yeah, it's a yeah. big heat pipe loops around yeah. and it spreads it across the like the back plate yeah. of the system. It's, that it's using the like a lot. That's 40 watts of of CPU GPU yeah. to cool yeah. passively. I mean, we don't know how they have both the CPU and the GPU configured. They could be throttled down. I'm sure that they would throttle if you, you know. Well, I mean, Intel CPUs now are pretty configurable by OEM, so they could configure it down. I don't It seems like that would defeat no, a lot of the purpose. I'm 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 pretty sure that they're not actually sticking the heat pipes under the BGAs. Yeah, this is that's probably true. Yeah, that's that's a good point, Josh. 
That would hey, be a I'm, design I'm just flaw. here to help you all out. <laughs> Some engineers got fired after that first revision. I mean, think about mm. how great the heat dissipation would be if you just intercepted the power before Ooh. it even got to the silicon. Yeah. Sure. Right? Oh. Mm. Next yeah. generation thinking there, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it has a touch pin. Um, it, it has Wacom technology in it. It's got the fingerprint sensor in the bezel, which is kind of interesting, not on the keyboard, which means you can use the fingerprint sensor in tablet mode as opposed to just when you have the keyboard out, mm-hmm. Yeah, with it, which is kind of nice. They also talked about how if the system is powered off and you touch the fingerprint sensor, it will power on and then log into Windows. With only one touch, so okay. it's kind of using registering that fingerprint and then waiting until it gets into Windows. You don't have to, to sit there and hold your it. finger on it during the whole process. Yeah, I don't think so. Huh? That's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Twelve and a half inch screen, twenty two fifty six by fifteen oh four. One of those very common resolutions that we're all <laughs> very familiar with. Uh, IPS display. Uh, starting at sixteen ninety nine. That's pretty which high. You might expect for something like this. It's pretty it's definitely high. a high end product. It doesn't ship until December, so I imagine yeah. the first time I'll actually get hands on with this is probably at CES. So yeah. it'll it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The the competing uh, announcement to this was the Dell uh, XPS thirteen refresh, which was also kind of shown for the first time at at uh, at IFA. Um, this. Moves up to the eighth generation quad core processors, uh, still inside that 15 watts. So the KB Lake R designs. Um, this is kind of the polar opposite. They don't change anything. They just put the others. They well, just put the CPU in it. You from say that, everything but then they, you said they also had like this huge battery life increase, right? They 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 claim now this device gets 22 hours on the 1080p screen. On the yeah. 1080p screen, and the last one was what 13 or something. Uh, well, let's see what their claims are. It seems actually. impossible. With just a CPU change. Also, also keep this in mind. When people think about how beautiful these high resolution displays are, take the number out of it and just think about the relative difference between these two. Dell claims the mobile like mobile mark battery life score of 22 hours for the 1080p monitor. Mm-hmm. If you get the 3200 by 1800 QHD plus touchscreen, uh-huh. they rate it at 12. One third. So it goes no, Rough. like more than a half. It goes from 22 to 12. Oh, 22. Okay. 22 to 12. I thought you said 32. That's that's so even if you take even if those numbers are are way uh, over exaggerated, right? And it's actually like 12 and 7 or something like that. That's a huge. Well, the thing is, huge so gap. And we've seen that multiple think times. Think about it this way: the CPU is dropping to a 15 watt part. 15 watt. It was, at, it was always a 15 watt part. Oh, well, 15 watts at full load. It right? was always 15 watts. Well, I know, but it's not like it sits there going 15 watts all the time. Correct. That's my point, yeah. right? So, like, the screen is really the thing that draws Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, absolutely. But it's not just, like, it's the same size screen. It's just a different resolution. Yeah, but you need a brighter backlight. You yeah. need a brighter backlight. You so need you more same compute brightness. power to kind of keep those pixels running, too, from, eh. the, from the integrated GPU. Yeah, so th- they have the same battery life claims on the Cabby Lake XPS 13. 22 and 12? Yeah, and 13, yeah. And 13, okay. I know, so, I know we, we it, it, battery tested the high resolution one and we got like what, like five or six out of it? On the, f- I, are you talking about the one I bought at Costco? Yeah. That was a 15. That was an XPS 15. No, no it wasn't. No? It wasn't. It was an XPS 13? Mm-hmm. And we got what, six? Yeah, with, the, with six a high resolution display. Yeah. That's why I returned it. I, I, I still think the 1080p battery, like. one will get above 10 hours. You still think you think it will? Yeah, you do not. Yeah. I think real yeah. world it will absolutely. Yeah, and I well, especially now that my MacBook Pro died, uh, I think I might be buying one of these when they come out September twelfth. Died I, for the second time. I'm really interested in the, in these quad cores. I, I want to get one in. I want to do the testing. I want to make sure there's no sacrifice in battery life for like general compute, like mm-hmm. writing in Word and doing yeah. all the crap that I do. Those are the types of things that I do when I'm concerned about battery life. Will it last the whole day? Will it last the plane ride? I will say, like, I was in meetings uh, in New York yesterday, and it was really nice. I took this ThinkPad X1 Carbon that has a Cabby Lake dual core, and it's just, you know, it's new, fresh, good battery, all that type of stuff. Yep. Uh, and I left the hotel room, and I didn't take my charger with me. You did a whole day and worth I did of- a whole day with it. Right. And I didn't, and I wasn't like anxious, right? You know how you have, if you have an electric car, you have, what do they call it? Like range anxiety. Range anxiety. <laughs> right. Yeah. I would often have with my Dell because it was older battery and, you know, you've got OS rod or whatever you want to call it. I had this like battery life anxiety of like, oh, I got to bring the power cable. I got to plug it. Every time I had, 
every time I was sitting down in a meeting, I was finding a power plug and plugging it in. I don't want to run out of battery when I need it the most. And here I didn't, I didn't have any of that issue. Yeah. So, so the other note about availability is they're starting with the highest end skew. They're starting with the i7 in September, September 12th, I believe they said. Okay. Then i5s will be sometime in October. And I don't think Intel has announced eighth gen i3s yet. They have not. So they have not. They they will probably keep the Cabby Lake i3 seven thousand series in the lineup I on the low end. I'd imagine. I think you'll find that what will happen is the Cabby Lake refresh, the quad core parts, are going to be in these flagship solutions. You know, a couple of systems from Dell, a couple of systems from Acer, a couple of systems from HP, maybe a couple from ASUS. But they're not going to replace all the dual core parts that exist. Those dual core dual core parts are going to continue to exist and sell all the way through, you know, into 2018 and maybe beyond. Um, and they'll be slightly less expensive. And Intel's going to like make a little side deal with these guys, saying, "Hey, we want to make sure these quad core parts are available at reasonable prices, so we're not going to charge you a whole bunch of extra, even though these dies are bigger and they're costing us more." Um, but I don't think. They're going to do that for everybody, for all systems. Otherwise, they they risk taking a big hit financially uh, by doing that. So, um, regardless, for somebody like me who is interested in like I've had an XPS 13, I really liked it. I like the I would love to see this form factor, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, get upgraded to a quad core 15 watt part as well. Um, you know, maybe they'll re-release. They'll have that OLED screen. They'll do all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Or for one of those systems as well. That they just might barely be. came out with that system in seventh gen. Yeah, just barely, right? <laughs> and, and you know, that's why I don't think we're going to see a lot of massive redesigns around the eighth gen. No, I don't. Yeah. Think so. I think it's mostly just going to be putting a new processor in old machines. Yep, which I is fine. I mean, you don't really need anything more than that. But hey, Josh, you're muted. what? Oh. Do you want to tell me about your Alcantara wheel? Alcantara. Which is ultra suede in Italian. Okay. Uh, Talk about marketing. Fanatec releases a CSL Elite. Fanatec. Fanatec. Sure. Fanatec. Fan oh, Fanatec. Fun Attic. It matters be not because fun in the they're attic. German. Oh. They probably pronounce it <laughs> with like 19 syllables. <laughs> so, what are we looking at? So, anyway. Uh, they they have released a new wheel, not a base, not pedals, but the actual wheel that you touch. Now, um, what last month, earlier this month, we went over the uh, CSL Elite uh, setup, and the CSL wheel P1 is their lowest cost wheel of the group. It's it's. Kind of a plastic rim. It has a rubberized coating. It still has aluminum uh, spokes and base. And it's got kind of the, you know, not as nice quick release uh, unit that attaches it to the base. However, it had some, some nice features to it. Um, and especially because it was cheap. Now, if you look at other Fanatic wheels, I mean, they go from 200 bucks up to 400 and that's just the wheel itself not the base and so they usually typically use some really nice materials really quality construction but they're actually you know they're they're looking to sell more product and they're pulling their price points down but they're still in increasing the luxury of the item and so they've taken this csl p1 and made the csl elite wheel p1 it has instead of the rubberized coating it's got the alcantara it still has the uh, lcd display and the uh, the centering led light uh they've also improved the uh the the, the shifter uh clicking so the activation uh on the previous one it was a little anemic you could kind of feel it activate, but you always had to press it all the way back just to make sure that you did. You didn't get a whole lot of feedback. You got used to it, but it wasn't really any fun. I mean, you didn't have that snap of of when you know that you've you've engaged the gear. Now they've improved that with uh, these special dome activators that will give you that whole tactile sound feedback that we've been wanting from from these Fanatic wheels. For some time. Uh, and the last thing 
that they they do is they you, you're able to swap out all the different buttons. So if you scroll down a bit, and people were kind of curious what you were looking at on the screen, unless this screen is oh there we go. You can swap out all the buttons you want. You don't Ooh. have to rev the regular Xbox buttons. You can have things like lights, hazard, horn, <laughs> windshield wipers, and you could you could. I've always wanted to simulate windshield wipers. In any game. Mm-hmm. What's that? I've always wanted to simulate windshield wipers. Well, Dirt Rally and Dirt <laughs> Four does that, and in fact, some of the other rally games they they don't have an automatic wiper thing that you can program in. You only hit that when you want to clear the the windshield. Just like if you're in a rally. So uh, what's nice about this, it is 159 bucks for the unit with all those buttons. And that's, for Fnatic, a pretty good deal. I think the, the regular one, the CSL P1, is, I believe, an $89. So you get upgraded buttons, upgraded activation switches and the sh- paddle shifters and then the Alcantara fabric otherwise known as ultra suede wrapping around the entire thing and what is nice about this as well not only just the feel but they have not increased the weight of this unit and it retains its stiffness so the forces acting upon your hands through the wheel are not impeded by a higher weighted wheel. So it's a nice, nice little upgrade for those who uh, would enjoy a little PC and Xbox racing. I didn't want every button to be a windshield wiper button, though. That's sure like a- you do. And the reverse driving button. Mm-hmm. Yes. So look, what you can, immediately- you can look at those two buttons in the middle at the top. Yeah. You can adjust your seat position. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why would you need that? Why would I need to move it in a virtual game? Shouldn't it always be perfect? Actually, if if you do the cockpit view in Dirt Rally and Dirt 4, you can do that. But oh, really, you can just move the camera inside the, the camera car forward huh? or back. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Can I move it back through the back of my head so I can so I have to like like I'm in the back seat and I'm kind of looking over somebody's shoulder? Could you have like that Assassin's Creed thing where you just see like teeth and eyes? <laughs> right. And, and a little bit of hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. We're asking the important questions. Speaking of important questions, Josh, is that what? is that red stitching I see on that wheel? It is it is hand red. Well, it's 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 hand uh, stitched red thread. That that's beautiful. It is. It it looks very nice. How much is this By wheel? Some old German lady. One just like you want it. Working at Fanatec. That's not bad for a hand stitched <laughs> anything, actually. No. No. Mm. Mm. All right, very cool. I mean, how else are they going to stitch that? Do you really think a, a machine yeah, is going to be able to stitch? You can't machine stitch the inside of a steering wheel rim. No, no. It's, I I think think it's one of these robot GTI. It's impossible enough to do by hand. You don't think I you bet can you make someone a robot could program a quad copter to do it. <laughs> quad copter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like a, a quad the, copter. Uh, the car makers don't have a robot that does it. So, that you know of. Science. Secret robot. Uh, let's get into uh, Intel announcing Xeon W and Xeon Scalable workstation processors. This is pretty much exactly what you think it is going to be. They basically took the Xeon Scalable server enterprise parts, data center parts, and mm-hmm. are offering them in f- in in single socket motherboards meant for workstations. Isn't this the business card then, sized CPUs? Yes, the ones oh, on the okay. left there in that picture. Okay. And on the right is essentially your Skylake X Core i9 family, but as a Xeon part. So you mean just like how they've been before? <laughs> well, they usually had the Xeon parts out first before they oh, sure. did the Core i9, like the HEDT. Well, the now they have a reason platform. to hurry that the heck up for the they desktop did. side. They did, correct, so, correct. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you'll be able to build two socket systems uh, so you can have up to 28 cores for the Xeon scalable side, up to 18 cores for the Xeon W series of processors. Um, Sebastian wrote this up for it. So, you know, most of the same specs that existed for the enterprise parts and or the Core i9 now exist in this kind of Xeon uh, uh, environment. Um, not a whole lot has, has really changed here, right? So they're basically comparing, like you can see here, the the, the Xeon W family is 
up to 18 cores, up to 36 threads, up to a half a terabyte of DDR4 memory. Um, all these specifications should sound very familiar to you if you follow the Core i9 7900 launch, as well as you know the other successive parts that will be coming out throughout the rest of the fall. There's another slide there that says up to 56 cores. How many? How so many that's a dual socket. Dual. 28. 28 oh, 28. Per, okay. 28 per per uh, per socket. Um, 112 threads, which mm -hmm. is a lot, mm -hmm. up to three terabytes mm -hmm. of memory on those systems. Um, again, really impressive specifications. Still super expensive. Like they didn't suddenly reduce the pricing of all this. Like I think the Xeon uh, scalable workstation part, the 8701, I think is what it is, uh, is still like 10 grand. So yeah. a dual socket Xeon workstation now meant to just be for the larger... CPU. I believe so. Yes, I don't think I don't think. But well, based on this, because they don't mention they don't, they don't mention, mention like up, up to, to thirty six cores yeah. per. Yeah, I right. Agree. So it's like yeah. you know, if you don't need that many cores, you go with the small one. If you need some more, you go with the bigger one. If you need more than that, you do two big ones. Yeah, but you know what sucks? You don't have an upgrade path anymore. That's true. If you bought the previous the small Xeon previously before, and you were doing a project that needed. A lot more power. You could drop in the highest core count one. Can't do that anymore. Or you could put in a could have put sure, that one because in a it's a bifurcated board. socket and yeah. platform. Yeah. I mean, and, and and back to your point, like honestly, if you have two of these sockets on your motherboard, you don't have room for like add-in cards. That's true. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. So it's a different type of 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 system, really. Like I, I think the number of people that are going to do two socket like per desk workstations is going to be really limited for that. That's going to be more along the lines of, you know, rack mount workstations where you're doing remote connection type of stuff yep. to it. Um, so I think, so I think there's a little bit, a little bit of difference there. Um, the, so they're calling the, the W is on W processors, the mainstream workstation offering uh, a single socket. And then the Xeon scalable workstation as the like high end, workstation segment it, it is kind of odd to have these these two different sockets they you know they it does kind of kind of screw things up a little bit um but it also shows that before people had the ability or the desire to take xeon like high-end xeon parts and put them in consumer motherboards because you could get higher core counts and higher memory capabilities that doesn't appear to be the case here. Like they're only going up to 18 cores on Xeon W, which is the same as the consumer variants that are probably going to be at or a little bit lower priced. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have what, like a 22 core processor in this X99 board in the yeah. streaming system. Yeah. Yep. Which if you want to go higher than that, you can get this bad boy, right? Like you can still do that. It's just, you know, you're going to pay a little bit more for it and buy yeah. a little bit. I mean, quite a bit more. Yeah. Like quite a bit, like quite yeah. a lot more actually. So, uh, finally, I want to mention this. Uh, Logitech just today announced a a two new devices: the the G thir G six thirteen keyboard and the G six zero three mouse. Um, the G six thirteen keyboard is their first wireless mechanical gaming keyboard. It is wireless. It is completely battery powered. It has like a little uh, add in or a little plug in light speed mm -hmm. USB dongle for it. Um, Light speed meaning the uh, faster. Light speed meaning like it's, it's faster there's two different wireless kind, technology. There's two different kinds of dongles for yep. Logitech stuff, right? There's the, what's the regular one called? The unifying receiver. Unifying, yeah, unifying receiver. receiver. So you can have like, I think up to six things connected yep. to one of those, six Logitech devices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but your latency is like seven or eight milliseconds. Yep. And, and but if you want the light speed ones, those are the ones where, you know, they have, when they have the mouse, the mouse, yeah, sorry, the mouse that they claim is like as fast as a wired mouse or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like that's the other receiver. That's light that you, speed. You can only have yeah. the one device connected to. Correct. It, right? As far as I understand, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, so the keyboard is interesting. It's so it's like the first wireless mechanical keyboard. Um, it is using their Romer G switches, so not like a Cherry derivative or anything like that. It's using their own switches. Yeah. Uh, there is no backlighting at all on the keyboard. There's no RGB lights. There's no backlights of the keys. Uh, Ken pointed out that the that the the paint on the keycaps is very um, bright contrasting color. bright okay. color uh, in order to try to make up for some Seems of that. Seems like extra bright white. Yeah, it, it does. I agree with that. Well, that's good. So if if you've never used a Romer G switch, I like it. I've been using one on my main keyboard on my, my desk for both typing and gaming for 
probably two years now or something uh, like I've that. I've heard them described as cherry switches with O-rings or something. Yeah. Like yeah, but I mean, there's so many different types of cherry. They don't, don't bottom, even know what it, like they don't bottom, like, they don't and make a sharp. Bottom. No, yeah, they, they don't do hard not. bottom. They do not. Um, they definitely feel different than the average they cherry do. switch. They absolutely yeah. do. Uh, I they almost I, feel like, like a dome, but with slight mechanical. There's a mechanical action that actually rigidity. happens before it hits the bottom. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, there are cherry switches that do that as well. Sure. That their actuation is before sure. you yeah. hit the bottom. But of the, the cherry is like but... people have to buy O rings and put them in cherry keyboards so they don't like make such a loud some noise when the. Some of them, yeah. yeah. Um, now, the reason they didn't do any backlighting on this is for the battery life concerns. They basically said that. The keyboard in this state, as it exists, with two AA batteries, will get 180 days of battery life. And what would it be if it had backlights? 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, but that's backlight always on. That's with backlight always on, yes. Yeah, so true. there's, there's, you know, you could do it so that it only turns backlight on was really like when you hit a key and it times or... out after a few minutes. So if you or walk like, away or something. Ambient light sensor. So yeah, ambient light sensors. You could, you could do some things with it, but I think they were more concerned about just making it as long as possible. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of started using it. It has some other cool features. Like it has the ability to, it can connect to one light speed receiver and one Bluetooth device. And there's a physical button on the keyboard to switch between the two devices and it happens very quickly. So if you want to have one, it's turned off, Alan. Okay, I was checking to see if I was... Like, you're not, you're not, you're not... Bothering my computer with it. If you if you turn on the wire, the the light speed, and you're typing on your computer, then you hit Bluetooth, and say you have it attached to your tablet or your phone. You just got a text message. Then you can start typing a text to your wife, and on then your hit phone. the button and go back to your. It's uh, like a KVM. Yeah, it kind is. Of. It's kind of like a KVM in that way, right? So which, it's, which so buttons it's, is that on this? This one? one right here. So it's light speed and then Bluetooth. Huh. So you just hit it once, and you you know you pair it like you would normally do everything else, and it, and it works pretty good. The buttons are very. Um, like the media buttons are very, like they just, they just tap. They're very clicky. I, yeah. I don't think I'm a big fan of that. They make a lot of noise, which those I don't are, like. Those are those just regular like hat styles. Yeah, like, like something you would buy, you would put on an Arduino style yeah. almost type tactile of thing. Tactile switch. Yeah. yeah, it's just a regular tactile uh, so switch. So they don't feel like anything else on it. It still has the switch to disable. Like you can enable game mode, which disables the start button. Those types okay. of things. Okay. Uh, still got support for the G keys, like the programmable keys on the left. So I, I think it's really, I think it's actually a really neat idea. Um, I know a lot of people will say like, ah, "Who cares about a cable for your keyboard?" It's just it's just one I mean, less I thing to, kind of to be on your that, desk, right? It's just one yeah. less thing to be up there. If and you on have the a pull-out drawer and you don't, and that's where your keyboard is, and you don't want the cable, like you know, yeah, that's even that's that's a good point too. Yeah. Um, the other thing they announced was the G603 mouse, and it is a uh, it uses a brand new sensor, brand new microcontroller mm -hmm. um, called Hero. And I'll talk about that in a second. It also has 18 months of battery life, up to 18 months of battery life, with two AA batteries. And it's a gaming-centric mouse. I mean, that's like way more than even like the older travel mice that had AA's in them and stuff. Like we yeah. have some of those around here. They so do not last 18 there's months. There's two modes. There's the high setting, which will run at one millisecond response time rated. Does that mean it comes with the Unify? Or and a, low. Uh, at light speed? Yes, it's a light speed okay. connector as well. Okay. And then the low has a response time around eight milliseconds um, which is, you know, probably not ideal if you're a, a, a high action, uh, you know, Twitch-based gamer, right? But that's the low settings where you get your 18 months. If you go to high, they're still claiming you get four to six months Does that mean, of battery life out of this mouse. So even though it has a low setting, you have to connect it to a light speed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, now, the reason they can do all this, it's actually, it's really, it's way more interesting than I thought it was going to be. When we sat down and we said, hey, we're going to have a confirmation conversation, we're going to talk about mouse sensors. Yeah. And I was like, mm, okay, yeah, I like you guys. So I'll sit in on this meeting and we'll see how I mean, this goes. I mean, they take their development pretty seriously. They, they absolutely do. Yeah. It's it's super interesting for, to, to hear them talk about it. And and I, I'm trying to get them out here to do a live stream video with one of their engineers, one of their product guys to talk about it. Because they go into very good detail about you know how the, the analog front end of how the camera is actually viewing it and how they parse pixels and how they do it in batches and mm -hmm. how they're able to optimize for power efficiency. Mm -hmm. Um they change the polling rate or they change the pixels per second that they process based on how fast you're moving the mouse. Yeah. That's how they yeah. can adjust for power. Uh, <clears throat> they talk about the differences, the changes they made in the analog to digital conversion part of that mm -hmm. and how it improves performance. Um, they talk about using an IR LED sensor and how like the imaging lens and the sharpness of it and the amount of area they were able to cover 
the sensor can be bigger but more power efficient because mm -hmm. of it. It's really interesting stuff. So, yeah. the, the, but the net result of it is they claim to have similar, almost identical gaming performance, sensitivity, speed, all that, to something like the G900, which is the mouse I've used forever. Yeah. That thing is rated at 24 to 26, 24 to 36 hours of battery life. Yep. Gaming battery life. It's like life. a couple of days. It's, and this yeah. is rated at four to six months. Well, it's not, just, it's not just gaming battery life. It's just, you're just using it. Yeah. Right. It's not yeah, even yeah. gaming. Because right? I mean, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, because it doesn't know if I'm gaming right. or not gaming or whatever. Right. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to do that. Yeah. Like I have one at home. I'm lucky to get two full days of like actual working on yeah. a computer out Before of it. you have to plug it in. Yeah. Yep. So the G603 makes up for that. It's a $70 mouse. I should have mentioned the keyboard's 150 Okay. Right? So it's a little bit pricey. Keyboard's pricey. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the couple of mechanical, wireless mechanical keyboards that exist, that's actually pretty low. Is it? Yeah. Okay. We're talking Good. like 190-ish for kind of weird Chinese brands that are yeah. putting out wireless yeah. sharing keyboards. So, so the mouse is interesting. It has the same ability to um, switch between two devices. Uh, uh, light speed and a Bluetooth. Yep. If you want it to do that, it's not backlit. I it assume. can. The it G is not. Just has no light, light up. Right. Yeah. Uh, it can. It supports two AA batteries. You, it'll run on just one, and get half of the rated battery life in both instances. Well, the batteries are just in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just kind of like, oh, if you only have one good battery, you can at least operate it. It'll work. And they say, you know, you can choose which side you want to put it on. Of the, of the thing, depending on where you want the weight <laughs> oh, of the, huh. of the battery to be, right? Specifically. Yeah. 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 Um, so it, 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 it's it's a neat thing. And like you combine this with, with the power play stuff that they launched last week. And those two technologies seem very uh, on, on opposing sides, right? One of them supplies power to a fairly power hungry sensor and device continuously. So you never have to worry about charging it. Yeah. This, on the other hand, goes to the utmost to present power efficiency yeah so that you never have to you don't have to worry about changing it once every year and a half or once you know twice a year mm -hmm. depending on what mode you're in so uh it's a really interesting kind of combination here and, I, and i'm curious i really really want to get guys in to talk about this this sensor and, and what it means i know um there was an opportunity to go over to their development labs over in uh, switzerland that i was disappointed we didn't get to do so we may have to make uh, a special trip for something like that. So uh, the G613 is the keyboard. The G603 is the mouse. I think they're available now. I saw the key, the mouse for sale, but I haven't seen the keyboard um, for sale yet. But um, so yeah, I, I'm going to be using this, this keyboard for a little while. But uh, there you go. Which I guess leads us into our picks of the week. And we should have done this in a different order because my pick of the week was this keyboard. And the one that's right there. Yeah, this one that's sitting here that I that I've been using for a little bit now. Surprise! That's so strange. It's kind of heavy. Holy crap! I mean, it's a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. You want it to have a nice thick back plate. Yeah, and, so you, want it, and you want it to be stationary. Like, and like you stuff. want it to be a heavy yeah. device. That's the batteries, Alan. Like <laughs> that's where the batteries go. I've never seen a battery yeah, compartment break it. before. Break it, Alan. I I will also say what oh, they they've done the uh the smart thing of. They underneath the battery cover is a place to plug in the receiver. Yeah, yeah. So that if you if you want to take this keyboard with you, you plug in the receiver. Don't worry about losing it. Uh, you don't accidentally kind of leave it in the really keyboard. Really wish they did that on the nine hundred mouse. Their their mouse does it. The six thirteen mouse does it. Oh, the six thirteen. But does, the G nine hundred yeah. mouse does not do it. Right. Neither does the MX two or the MX to anywhere to a little freaking square in the I know, bottom. I would, I, yeah, because like and I <laughs> I use the MX anywhere as my like travel mouse. Yeah. And having the ability to, yeah, well, whatever. It doesn't do it. You have to like plug the dongle into your laptop before you go. So you don't. Yeah, but then. Like, so it's somewhere. I was telling right? Ken earlier, I have the issue where I have it so that when you plug in a, a mouse, the touchpad disables. But if I'm working uh, in a constrained space, like on a tray on, a, on an airplane, yeah. and I open up the laptop and the trackpad doesn't work, it takes me fixes. Like, oh, idiot, you have this little dongle attached. Uh -huh. And I just have to unplug it and like put it now, in my where pocket do you put it? and hope I don't lose it. I, yeah. I wonder if we could fix this. I wonder if there's enough area in the battery compartment where if we like, if I like 3D printed a little holster, you could super glue it to the bottom of the battery cover and then slide it in there. As Probably. long as there's the G, like, the MX anywhere charges through USB, so there's no removable battery. No, there's battery. no battery. Right. Yeah, there's no removable battery. Yeah. That's probably why they don't do it. They don't have to put a hole Maybe. in the mold. If Maybe. They, 
don't have to. So yeah. here's the keyboard. It's a mechanical keyboard, Romer G. Um, the only lights on it, it's kind of interesting. When you hit these lights for uh, the light speed or the Bluetooth, they light, they light up for about three seconds and then turn off. Yep. The only light that I've seen stay on is caps lock. The little caps lock key. Is wonder, the, the I wonder, if, thing. wonder if it eventually just like I would hope it, I would hope away. that would wouldn't time out because then you literally have no indication of whether or not they caps lock. Just took off the caps lock key. Problem solved. Taking yeah, like taking like should. months off of your battery life, man. Like just by but leaving do you the see, caps lock. Do you see what Ken's saying about the the brightness of the of yeah. the font? Yeah, they are like very on uh, it. It is. It's a pretty minimalistic design. Oh, um, they should have used glow in the dark paint. That would have solved everything. Maybe it. Maybe it is. I tell my tritium. Goodness. I'm going to put that by my testes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Josh, you always have those on the keyboard anyway. $149. If not uh, on this wristwatch. <laughs> Pre-order now. Uh, yeah. I, I, like I said, I haven't spent a whole lot of time with this. Oh, also worth noting in this picture here, it comes with a little um, plastic stand, I guess, for a phone or tablet. That So like if I, I was using it today, I put my phone on it. And so when I got a message from my wife. I unlocked it and I could see it and I would, t I would switch over to the Bluetooth mode on the keyboard, type the message, send it, go back to light speed and continue working on what I was working and it was actually pretty helpful. It's just kind of a neat little thing they include extra and it does include two batteries so you get your Yeah, that's the important bit. 18 months of, uh, of use that's time right on the box. Yeah, yeah. 18 months of power provided is what it should say <laughs> on the box. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, let's get into the rest of what you Yahoo's have for us tonight. We'll start with uh, Jeremy. What do you got? Uh, a little bit of Canadian content. I've been fighting with uh, Total War Warhammer, which seems to think it needs its entire install size free to be able to update it. So I've been moving games over from an SSD to another one and just being generally annoyed and realized, oh, crap, the VLAN's coming up, which means I'm going to have to install games at the yep. drop of the hat. Yep. So, all right, screw it. How much is an 850 right now in Kanukistan? Oh, 210 bucks. But there's shipping, but it's got a serial number. So I took this and I printed it out and I walked down to my local Best Buy and I said, yo, price match. And they said, yep, sure, no problem. And I walked out of there with uh, 210 bucks for an 850 Evo 500 gig. This deal is going on for a little while. So anyone up here who needs a little bit of space and doesn't need the full terabyte... Or, you know, four terabyte if you want to get crazy. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. And if you want it right now without paying for shipping, I've proven Best Buy will take it. That's actually a pretty good so deal because uh, on, on the U.S. side, the 500 gig is 173. There was a deal this oh, morning. Geez. There was a deal this morning that I think was only up for a few hours. It was $109. For the 500 gig? For that same oh, drive. that would have been nice. Yeah. Wow. That's only like 20 cents a gig. By the time I even saw it posted to... Uh, what does it think it is? A Vega <laughs> graphics card? I, that was like a crazy <laughs> no, deal. There will be more. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Price yeah, tire is still selling out. <sighs> yep. That's that's all right. Wow, $109. That deal would have been I, my I, I feel you, though, Jeremy. Like, <laughs> So we use, we use SSDs for our GPU test bed. And the problem we always run into is we want to we want to keep a lot of games on hand so that we don't have to re-download or reinstall things. Exactly. And we have one terabyte drives in here, and they still like it's never enough. They fill up. Yeah, all it doesn't the matter time. what size you have. What was for it? Final Fantasy 15. 170. Was announced gigabytes. as having a 170 gigabyte what's, install. What's Doom now? Doom's up to about 100. Yeah. Is it is it's it really? Well, so they released yeah. a patch that made all of the multiplayer DLC free. So now everyone downloads it. Yeah, patch six 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 six. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Ha, ha, but yeah, I, I mean, it. it's it's pushing ninety hundred gigs. <laughs> yeah, no, I bought it uh, yeah. at a Steam sale a while ago, and I'm like, I just have not been able to install it because I don't got the space. Amazon has the eight fifty Evo five hundred for one thirty nine. That's pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Oh, well, if you're down price. south, grab that one. Yeah. All right, Josh, what do you got for me? Me. You know, I I didn't even see what you guys had posted. Yeah, and I threw this one up. I guess it's Logitech Hour <laughs> at PC Perspective. That's a good it's price. It's the G nine ten keyboard. You no, eight ten. The G eight ten. Yeah, I yeah. I originally bought this for my son she for Christmas, and he opened it, and he got really angry because he wanted the one right above this. Oh, the for nine fifty dollars more. Yeah, I have the nine ten, and it. 
And it added nothing to it other than some... (laughs) Well, so the G910 is much older than the G810, and it has Mm -hmm. like a lot of like gaming aesthetic to it, right? Like it's got a lot of angled edges and stuff like that. But otherwise, you're right. Like same switches, same functionality. I would would buy an 810 today for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I I inherited his (laughs) G810. (laughs) <laughs> because his, his mother decided that the 910 was what he needed and he wouldn't talk to me for a while uh, because I <laughs> – anyway. You're a bad father. What can I it's say? It's still rather traumatic. Uh, yeah. But that's why I chose it because it's a really good keyboard. And don't listen to your 14-year-old kid <laughs> when when he wants a higher-end keyboard. No, Just try to convince him that. that this one – We'll save you 50 bucks, and it's just as good, if not better. <laughs> I don't think Whoa. that matters to them at all. L- look at that Amazon no. link. You get a free snack if you buy this keyboard. I, Wait, what? Free snack when you spend $25? Oh, my God. Oh, man. View eligible Hold on, snacks see here. the eligible snacks here. I need to see right it's now. It's probably just your account Does that it gets come that, in the keyboard already, or do you get to look, eat it Look, animal first. crackers. Oh. Oh. Animal Happy crackers. Belly Sweet and Spicy Trail Mix. Yogurt trail mix. Prime, popcorn okay, mix. there's literally four items. Well, it's free. Chocolate and dried fruit trail. Hmm. Wickedly prime and sweet cheesy popcorn. Oh, probably the popcorn. Wait, wait. wait it's prime branded. <laughs> it's prime. Yes, it is. Amazon is in the grocery business now, haven't you heard? Oh, yeah, this is true. Yeah. We're all going to die. Whole Foods. Oh, Cost well. your whole paycheck to fill up well. a whole bag. All right. Thank you, Josh. Alan, You're all right. So uh, I know I've recommended Factorio in the past in the past as a uh, pick of the week kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then so update on that. Recently, they declared one of their main like build strings, whatever, stable. So zero point one five is now a stable build for Factorio. It took them like a few months. It's not one point oh. Nope, okay. definitely not one point oh. But these guys are like the most active developers in anything I've ever seen ever. Like they're they're just insane. Over the Latest course of three months, three days ago. Well, no, that is Wait, this my is that is my build of a mod for the game. I made yeah, a mod. Wow. Wow. I saw you Don't popping in you and out of Factorio. I did it during the weekend. Don't I give you enough I wasn't on the clock. to do? Yeah. I wasn't on the clock. Come uh, on. So I there see was, you watching uh, Factorio videos over there. There was one thing that the uh, the guys had been, the, even the devs have been fighting with, is trying to get the flow mechanics working nicely in Factorio. You can't get liquids over a very far distance. Part of the problem is that the discharge of a pump, like if you try to fan out to a bunch of different pipes... Just going through the each individual pipes in order to make a header out of pipes to fan out okay. reduces the pressure. So you need something that's just one thing that acts like a manifold. So I just made manifolds for the game as a mod. And that's what it is. So you can, you know, get... It's been know, downloaded 50 times already. It's been downloaded 50 times. 50. I Not bad considering, like, times. you know. <laughs> this game is so serious on the mods that there is a mod downloading interface within the game. Like, you can pull up a list of all the mods. It sounds like crazy developers to me. Now, well, so this maybe. is version 0.2.0 of your, yeah. of your mod. Did you have you sure anything less zero than that? I had a 0.1.0. Was it pub- didn't you publish it here? No, that wasn't the public one. Alan doesn't follow us. That was my private beta. I had a private beta <laughs> of the mod. <laughs> just Alan. It just went to me and one other person. It was like, hey, did this break your computer? No? Okay, good. 0.2.0. Publish. So, not. anyway. I don't know, I just thought it was interesting poking around in the guts of the game. And even to make this mod... Yeah, what did, how did you do it? What did even, you write it in? What was they it? have, like, their own script that the game uses, uh, and, and okay. you have to figure out... To, but you can ease... All the other mods, you can just open up the zip and just look at their guts and see how they're, how they're coded. So you mm-hmm. can basically just kind of, like, base a mod off of another mod if you yeah. wanted to, right? So it's pretty cool. Um, but j- just to make this mod work, I had one bug that I discovered while cool. trying to make it work that the main developer for the game patched for me a few builds ago and then i found another bug that there's another guy that's gonna pat that has already patched in what's gonna be 0.16 once that comes out that will enable me to make if you notice all those headers are uh an odd number in length it's three five yeah. seven and nine because in even length if you rotate it 90 degrees in the game it, it does it's not on the grid Correctly, like it doesn't line up with mm. the other items in the game. So there's, so that's already been patched, but it's not out yet. So I can't push out my other update to the, to the mod. But you yeah, know, you I just get, figured you got nine on the what side. What the heck? Too. You know, why don't I do this game mod thing a little bit one time? Like, you know, and this was easy. So I can check that box on my bucket list now that I've made a mod for a Interesting. game. Interesting. Now, if you don't maintain it, people are going to hate you forever. 
Uh, it's true. With the way these are, like, since, I mean, my mod is out there, but it's, again, it's just a zip of the code. Like, there's nothing protected on there. Right. So there have been people, like, people have fallen off the map, and a, an update comes out, and it broke it, and then somebody else just kind of, like, picked it up and released it. Here's themselves. a mod where somebody made the Factorio logo. What? You know what? Is Alan is logo? used to people hating him for the rest of his life, so that's okay. going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, but, you know, cool. hopefully that'll help some people that were frustrated trying to, you know. Well, I'm definitely on that list. You know, you, you had issues trying to move water around in Factorio? Yes. Yeah. No, in real life. But now that you've invented manifolds, I feel like Much my, my, my entire civilization Think of it as be like better. a beer tap. You could just have like, you know. Oh, now I'm interested. Oh, okay. I was thinking oh, there's a tap for you. beer tap. Which well, is drinking the beer? You, what? Yeah, drink, drink they more all beer. They funnel and, into and one. The water and flows Josh just, yeah, even just, better. All of the beer taps funnel into a manifold, and then Josh just hangs exactly. off at the end of it. Yeah. And you could use it on your soda fountain, it's too, like, if you wanted like, to mix your flavors. It's like mixed liquors. It keeps my kidneys and prostate healthy. <laughs> Before we end the show, I do have one more Patreon. Uh, will you review modems? Just pledged $5. Uh, the answer no, is no. We will not pled review four ninety nine. How about only if it's a Z wind modems? modems, and only if we have to build a. I wish you had pledged twenty eight point eight. Only if we have to build a Windows ninety five <laughs> or Windows three point one system, do it. How about that? If you donate fifty six k, we'll consider it. his grasp. Yes, Jeremy is correct. If you donate fifty six k, we will review and test a fifty six k modem. Uh, there are definitely still services out there for this. We'll we'll. Uh, See if we can like publish a review on a 56k modem. <laughs> that would be hilarious. But also, pay you know how it's, bad, it's the first how step bad towards the going to print. Do you realize how bad the Diamond Wind modem, their their first PCI modem, mm -hmm. oh caused mm -hmm. my Quake Two experience to be absolutely horrible? Imagine today connecting to your internet service through a 56k modem oh, and saying, "Good God." I need the latest NVIDIA drivers for my... <laughs> that are, are 450 <laughs> meg right now. It's a 450 about, meg driver. How about... I and can, can I download the NVIDIA website? Bring the uh, sunbathing at the same time, please. Oh. I heard the kids talking about Steam. I'm going to download that new Doom. Yeah. And, and my mom calls after a week. You know, I've been trying to call you all week, and it's been a busy <laughs> signal. <laughs> Well, I, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Hold on now. So I'm gonna go to Wolfram Alpha, and that is, let's see. You said it was a hundred gigabytes. Sure. Right. So let's just round yeah, to hundred gigabytes. And you never got fifty six. You, you never got the fifty six k. You get the forty nine nine. Oh, I'm gonna be, whatever. I'm gonna be like theoretical peak, right? No, forty nine nine. Three thousand nine hundred sixty eight yeah. hours to download. Yeah. Do. Yeah, you have to take away the overhead. That's just how it works. Three thousand nine hundred sixty eight hours. Is uh, how many days is that? That is, um, it should tell you. It you, didn't it, actually. If you click on the hours, 165 days and eight hours <laughs> to download <laughs> Doom. That, that makes my five oh, that hours eight hours is going to be the longest. A patch will be out by then. <laughs> yeah, by the time you're <laughs> by the time it's done, and those patches are like 20 gig. Just keep patching. Nah. Just thinking you can patching, shotgun those. Keep patching, keep patching. That's right. You got to get a gotta, dual, keep, maybe get an ISDN line for 128k. <laughs> Get back going as well. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for the show tonight. Thank you for joining us. PCPro.com slash podcast. That's where you can go and find the show notes, all the links to the stories we talked about, our picks of the week, RSS files, MP3 downloads, video files, all that type of stuff uh, will be there. We'll be back next week with another episode of whatever show you just listened to. I'm Ryan Shrout. Still Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walder. And I'm Alan Malentano. Bye.